What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nate. Today, we are diving into my absolute magnum opus of a workflow, the Ultimate Flux V4 workflow, which has taken a really long time to produce, but I'm happy that it's finally out and that you guys can start creating with it. So everything is gonna be up on the Patreon. There's also gonna be a full text guide as well, so you guys can go through this if you don't wanna sit through watching the video. I do think it's gonna help to at least see how this actually gets used, some of the key features of it, and some of the real world examples, since I know a lot of you guys are probably just getting into Comfy UI, and it can seem a little bit daunting, but don't worry. Once you guys go over to the Patreon and hit download, you're gonna be able to see this JSON file, which all you have to do is drag and drop it right into a Comfy UI setup, and it should load up. Now, when you're first loading up this workflow, you may see missing nodes, a whole bunch of red boxes, and to fix that, it should be super easy. You just go over to the Comfy UI Manager and then click on Install Missing Custom Nodes, and it'll populate and allow you to then install all of those missing nodes Make sure that you hit restart and then restart your Comfy UI and it should load up properly. If there are any nodes that don't install properly off the bat, there's also install via git URL and we have links to all those nodes that are also gonna be on the Patreon as well. So you just paste them in there and hit okay and it should start to download those as well. Let's hop right into this workflow. So as you can see with this workflow, we have it set up pretty similar to all of our other workflows in which they read from left to right with the most important stuff being on the left-hand side in the top left-hand corner, much like you would when you're reading a book. So we're just gonna go ahead and start right through it here, which in the very top left corner here, we have everything labeled out to hopefully make it a little bit easier for you guys to understand what you're gonna need to do. So the first step is loading in all of your models. Now we're using the Flux Dev model and then we're also loading in our clip L, our T5 XXL, and then also our VAE, which is our AE.safe tensors file. Now, another cool thing that we're able to do in this is pick our add-ons. So if you guys don't wanna do things like upscaling or face detailing, or even adding in what's called a detailed daemon, which just adds a bunch more details to your image, you can turn those off right here. And if you're curious where they are in the workflow, you can also just hit this little arrow and it's gonna take you over to that section of the workflow where it's actually turning it off. Right below it is where we have our LoRa set. So we have the Black Mixture Photo Flux Pro LoRa, which just helps you when you're making more realistic looking images. But again, you guys actually don't really need this at all. You can also just turn it off. If you guys are working with illustrations or different styles, you may not even need this, but it is just something that I like to have when I'm working with some of these images. If you guys wanted to change any of these lures, you can just do so right here, turning them on and off. Should be super simple. The reason why we only have three this time around is because I would say that once you start adding in too many lures, you might not actually be producing a better result. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the second one here, which is our God of War Ragnarok Laura. I don't need it for this image, so let's go ahead and turn that off. And now moving over to the next part of the workflow, here we have the prompting. Now we have this broken down into two separate prompts because we found that this was producing better results. If you guys wanted to be extra lazy, all you'd have to do is just copy and paste the same prompt into both of these sections. But I like to have the clip L separate from the T5 XXL. If you guys have no idea what those terms mean, just think of the clip L more like hashtags. They're really focused on just keywords. Whereas the T5 XXL, this bottom one right here, is more narrative in structure. So you can write out full sentences, almost like you're composing a novel. The next thing over here is gonna be your generation settings. And this is also gonna be a huge section of this, which at the very top here, we have the mode select. Now by default, it's gonna be set to one, which is just our basic text to image workflow. But if you wanted to use an image reference, you could change this to number two, which is gonna be image to image. And if you wanted to do in painting or expanding your image, then you could change this to three. And that's gonna be changing everything right there inside of the workflow. Now, one thing I just wanna geek out about is that this part took forever to get right because if you guys were using some of the previous workflows, whenever you change from using a text to image versus an image to image or even in painting, there's a whole lot of different settings that have to get changed along the way to make sure things work right. And we have this now set up to where if you were to set this to number two for image to image, it's gonna also change all the settings that you need to as well. And we have all of this logic here in the back end that you guys don't even have to touch, but this is really how all of that's working to make sure that you only have to really change 
one number right here and everything else is nice and easy to use. The next thing that you really probably would focus on is just our empty latent size. So this is the size of the generation that you're making, which by default is gonna be at its largest setting. So this is gonna be 1728 by 1728, which if you guys are working with a not as powerful computer, I would recommend you guys just lower this down to something like 1024 by 1024, but you guys can also leave this at its default and just see how that works out for you. Other than that, I would say you can leave all of these settings at their defaults unless you wanna really explore a little bit more and if you're already comfortable messing around with some of these things. So let's go ahead and show you quickly how this works. This is gonna be the first generation, which we're calling our light resolution. And this image is then gonna get passed over to our upscaling section here, which is gonna try and bring it up to six megapixels as the target resolution. If you guys wanted to use a different resolution, you can also change that right here. And other than that, you can leave all the settings the same. And then as you move forward, you're gonna be able to see where it lets you compare the images. So this is the light resolution. And as we scrub forward, you can see, bam, it's just adding in so much more details. You can see even like the wrinkles on my face. And we're losing a bit of that flux soft skin look once we upscale it even more. So even got more beard definition. Um, and then same even with Chriselle's hair here, it's just looking so much better. Even the ear, if you look at that, right? It, it just came out much better. And yeah, so this was how we were able to make some really photorealistic looking images and images that just look much better than their base generations while still being high resolution. Another thing, if you notice the backgrounds, even though the main composition is staying the same, we're getting a lot more details in the grass as well. So really fun to play around with, but there's still another step further, which is this last step here, and it's called the face detailer. What this one does is that it actually identifies all the faces inside of the picture here, and then it segments them out and it creates a mask, and then it allows it to regenerate just the faces, which helps in a lot of scenarios when you're not liking that first upscale generation. You can actually go through here and see just how it even fixes some of those details on my face. So it's not a drastic change, but it just helps make it a little bit more adhered to what I would prefer as a more realistic look. So we actually see some more of the poor details and the eyes tend to just look a little bit better. But again, this is kind of just nitpicking here to make sure that those images come out as perfect as possible. And then at the very end section here, we have the important notes and download links. So again, if you guys needed to download any of those models, even knowing where to place them, all of that is gonna be right here in this section. And we also wanna send a huge thanks to all of our supporters. If it wasn't thanks to you guys, it would not be possible to make this workflow and share it with everyone. Now this last section here, I'd say you don't have to touch, but if you were someone who wanted to really break down this workflow, figure out all the different things that are in it, you can always click on any of these gray dots next to the nodes, see what actually pops out, but most of these are gonna be the reroutes to make sure that the workflow looks nice and clean. So that was the main default workflow mode, which is the text to image. If you guys wanted to navigate to any of the different modes easier, we also have it set up with these bookmarks to where when you press zero on your keyboard, it's gonna show the entire workflow. And then when you press one, it's gonna take you to the text to image workflow and all the settings that you need to change there. And then if you press two on your keyboard, it's also gonna take you to the image to image workflow. And if you press three, it's gonna take you to the fill and expand workflow. So this way, if you guys needed to navigate through this much easier, it's super helpful to have these bookmarks and the way that we set these up are just with these little bookmark nodes right here. So that was a really nice touch that I think is gonna help people save a lot of time. Now let's go over to the image to image workflow because I find this one to be super fun to play around with. So here we have our reference image, which is a pretty crappy generation of a king playing card. And as you can see down in the bottom, we not only have different suits being shown, but that does not really look like me and that does not really have my hair. I mean, it's almost there, but this was just something that we generated without even using Allura before. So let's say we wanted to use this image and actually generate now a new picture that's pretty much similar to this image. Now by default, since we have it set to mode one, then you're gonna wanna change this to mode two, which is the image to image mode. And then that's gonna go ahead and let you just activate the image to image workflow. Now we also have the denoise value set to 0.85, which I'd say is a pretty good 
value if you want to retain a lot of the composition, a lot of the style from the, your reference image, and then just make changes to that image. But if you're using this in a capacity in which you want it to just really keep most of all those details and just upscale and face detail and image that you already liked, I'd say you can lower this all the way down to something like 0.1 and it's also going to work well there. But for this example, I'm going to keep it at 0.85, which means that we're going to be changing a lot of this image, but still keeping that composition and that style there. Okay, so this is the result that we get now using a denoise value of 0.85 and using the image to image workflow. So the really cool thing about this is that over here, you can compare your reference image to your final result just by hovering over it. So you can see that it's not only fixed up the details to where that looks more like my face than the original reference photo, but it's even gone through and fixed those kings and made this just so much more cleaner while still preserving the composition, a lot of those details like having the crown and the placement of the character. So one thing that you guys may have remembered from our previous workflow is that we had canny and depth set up pretty much to do those things, but now we're able to strip out using those models. We have a much faster inference time all things to just using image to image as our reference. Another thing about this workflow is that it will automatically then process through the rest of the steps. So it's gonna go through the upscaler and the face detailer if you have them on by default. But for this example, I just stopped it earlier because I'm already pretty satisfied with this result. Another thing that you are gonna notice in this section here is that it's gonna ask, do you wanna use your reference image dimensions? And by default, that's gonna be set to true, which just means that whatever your reference image is, it's also gonna use that sizing to determine your next output image. If you were to set this to false, it's gonna be using whatever image dimensions that you set up earlier in the workflow in this empty latent size node. But I would recommend if you guys are just trying to get the same composition, the same kind of style, uh, to just leave this on its default settings. I also wanna show you though another example now. If we were not using the 0.85 value and instead crank this up a little bit higher, like 0.95, what you're gonna see is that the generation still uses that reference image, but now it is more creative in its output. So no longer is the composition exactly the same and the style is also different. So now the last part of the workflow that I wanna show you guys is the fill and expand workflow, which I have this set here, but it's not showing up properly yet because we have not set it up in this section here. So let's go ahead and turn this on to the in paint expand section. And the way that this part of the workflow works is that you're gonna wanna load in your input image, which is your reference image here. And you're also gonna wanna load in your mask up here. So we can use the same image for both of these. This bottom image is gonna be what's used for the sizing. And then this top image is gonna be used for our mask. So if we wanna inpaint something, we want our input image to be the same size as our mask image. And if you wanna create a mask, you just right click on the top layer here, then click open in mask editor. And you're gonna see this window pop up, which lets you then draw in masks super easily just using your mouse. And you have all these other options as well. So it's pretty cool to have that here. So I have this setup where it masks out my face and my hands, but let me clear this out and show you what it looks like if I was to mask out, let's say my suit jacket here. And so I'm gonna go through very quickly. One thing about these masks is that they don't have to be perfect, right? So we're gonna pop in our suit jacket just over here. And shoot, you know, I could actually probably mask out my jeans too. So let's go ahead and just mask out the entire outfit. So all we have left is just my face and my hands. And then to save this mask out, we just need to click save right here. And you're gonna see now it has that masked out. And since we have this set up to being on the mode three now for the in-paint and expand part, we can go ahead and change this prompt to anything. So I'm gonna type in, maybe let's have me wearing a purple suit. I'm not gonna have a super complicated prompt here. So let's go ahead and just try this out and see what this looks like. Okay, and we have our result now from in painting, which I gotta say, this looks pretty impressive. So let me take you through how this actually worked. So the cool thing about this set of fill and expand workflow is that it works a little bit differently from our previous V3 workflow. 
The reason for that is because it uses a new inpainting model specifically for Flux, which helps it just understand those details much better. But on top of that, it also uses these extra set of nodes here, which helps preserve the original detail from our image. The way that it works is that it actually crops into whatever you've inpainted before. So this over here, you can see my head's cut off and that's because it's just focusing then on the part that I masked out. And then what it does after it's done generating that section of the image is that it just pastes it right on top of that image from our reference that we're preserving all of those details. So if I was to scrub over my face here, nothing is changing no matter how much I zoom in. And that's because it is using that original reference image's face. But as we look over here, we can start to see that the entire suit is generated differently. And since it looks like I cropped off part of my hand here in that mask, it's also just taken out a little bit of my thumb. So I probably could have done a better job on the masking, but this is pretty good for a pretty quick initial generation. Like if you can even see here, we have a little bit of feathering because that's also a part of the masking. The hand, all the details other than that are pretty much close to the same. Another cool thing about this is that it processes through the rest of the workflow. So if you can see here, that watch looks very blurry because we masked it incorrectly. But once it's done upscaling, it makes those details much better. And then same with the fingers. The fingers looked like they were kind of cursed, but now you can start to see actual fingernails. And we even have more details now coming back onto the hand. So you can even see veins and even the buttons here on the jacket. So this is a pretty powerful tool. And then also another thing that you may notice is that the background where you can see those edges that we masked out not so cleanly get just smoothed out so that they fade in with the background much better and all the details then get upscaled pretty nicely. And as it goes through the face detailer, it also then details the face a little bit better than its original generation. So we get pores and we get a lot of those uh, details now back on the lips and the more accurate, I'd say beard pattern. I don't know if you can see it here on the camera, but yeah, I actually have a little bit of patchiness on this side and it actually shows up much better there on the generation. So that is how you guys would be using all three of these different modes. It's uh, super fun to play around with and I hope you guys get to creating a lot of awesome stuff. As always, I wanna thank the patrons for making this possible. All of you guys' names are right here and if you guys wanna support and you're watching this and you are not already a supporter on Patreon, hey, maybe you wanna go ahead and sign up. So anyways, this is how you use all of the workflows. Again, those keyboard shortcuts are gonna be huge time savers to navigate through this as quickly as possible. And I hope you guys get to creating a lot more awesome stuff with this. So we're gonna have a free version of this workflow up so that anyone can download and experiment with it. But our paid version for our Patreon supporters are gonna have some of those more extra details built in there. And I'm also gonna give you guys a custom agent prompt to help you make better prompts and better use of your Clip L and T5 XXL as well. So anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one. Until next time, all right, peace.